Hey guys, Monster Zero here, and uh, we are in X Motor Racing. Holy shit, we're in X fucking Motor Racing. Um, I'm gonna try and give this game. It's just a demo. This is what I downloaded off their website. I'm gonna try and give it an objective review. But I'm not gonna lie to you, that is gonna be hard to fucking do because of the shady marketing tactics employed by this fucking company. Or their publisher. Or I don't even fucking know their whole story. Whoever this fuck... Whoever the fuck Exotypos is... They have some bullshit, shady fucking marketing strategies. As I can almost guarantee all of the people watching this video will already know... The developers of X Motor Racing are notorious for spamming YouTube racing channels with comments along the lines of X Motor Racing is the best. Try X Motor Racing. Blah 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 blah. My own channel, and I I run a small YouTube um, racing gaming sim racing channel. I have less than two thousand subscribers, but almost every other day. I get a notification in my email that there's a comment pending approval uh, because it was like automatically flagged for spam. And 100% of the time when I get those emails, it's a comment about X Motor Racing. And it's always the same. They go on YouTube, either they just randomly put up comments that are like, X Motor Racing is the best, try X Motor Racing, blah, blah, blah. Or they go on to a specific. Um, video of a racing sim like P cars or Seto Corsa and they pick out a fault in the video and then will comment that a X Motor Racing does that better. Uh, one of their common things is like day night cycles, things like that, or like weather <clears throat> um, and you know they'll they'll go on like an Seto Corsa but it'll be like one guy will leave a comment and it, it's a fake YouTube channel. If you check any of the comments channels, they're they're fake. They they have no activity. They're blank YouTube channels. Like, created that same day, commented that same day, and then abandoned. But the typical way they'll do it is go on, like, an Assetto Corsa video, and one guy will leave a comment, and it'll be like, Doesn't this game have day-night cycles? Question mark? And somehow it'll get, like, fucking 15 upvotes. Mysteriously. And then the next day, a comment right under him will, like, respond to him, going, Huh. That sucks. Well, X Motor Racing has day night cycles. You should try it. And then there'll be a link to the fucking game with the link hidden. That's sort of what I've been going through for the past couple months. And like I said, I run a small sim racing channel. Less than 2,000 subs. I can't even imagine what some of the bigger guys go through. Guys like Empty Box and, and things like that. I can't even imagine how many um, X Motor Racing comments he gets. I. I would probably blow my fucking brains out if I had to deal with that many comments. Uh, so more power to him and the bigger uh, YouTube sim racing channels for dealing with this shit that I've been dealing with uh, the past couple months. So with all that said, let's set the record fucking straight, man. I went to X Motor Racing's website, downloaded the demo. There's no fucking way I'm paying 35 fucking dollars for the full sim. There's no way. You know, Assetto Corsa costs $35, and that's one of the premier sims out nowadays. How do they even... How... how, Where do they get off charging that much money for this fucking shitbag game? Where? Holy shit. You know, mistake number one, X Motor Racing. Why are you charging $35 for your game? If you charge $9.99, maybe I would buy it, you know, just to fucking say I bought it. You know, 35 bucks? No way. No way. Um, so whatever. Here we go. Try and be objective, all right? We're in X Motor Racing. We're in the main menu screen. Um, I, I, I'll give it this. The interface is, is not bad. It, it, it's not bad, all right? It's not good. It's not bad. Um, but it, it, it is not bad. I've seen some bad interfaces, and I'm sure you have too. R Factor 2, I'm looking at you. This interface is better than R Factor 2's. All right, it, it the interface is functional. We'll go to options. There are plenty of options as well. Bravo X Motor Racing. All right, there are plenty of options. They're all accessible, you know, right here. Um, they are a little confusing, but there are plenty of options. I mean, just you can pause at any time to get a better look. But I mean, just look at the options here. 
Okay, there, there are a lot of options in this game. That is good. I'll give him that. that that's good. All right, let's go to controls. Um, I had no trouble mapping my T500 and THR8, uh, TH8, whatever, RS, the fuck thing it is, my H pattern shifter. No trouble mapping either of these in this game. It, it was relatively simple. Okay, I, I didn't have any issues. I got all my gear notches on my H pattern shifter mapped. I got all the, you know, buttons that I want mapped on my uh, T500 mapped. That was pretty easy. There is one weird quirk where when, you're, when your mouse is over this menu, you know, in most games I'm used to being able to just scroll down with my mouse wheel. But if you do that in this game, I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to fucking remap anything. But if, you, if, you, if I were to scroll with my mouse wheel right now, it, it doesn't work the way you'd think it would work. It hops down to the next button and then selects it. So if I scroll down, a little pop-up message would go, what? button do you want to map throttle to? And I'd have to hit escape, and then it would ruin my mapping. Then I'd have to remap it. So that, that's a little weird, but I can fucking live with that. Force feedback, pretty good options on force feedback, believe it or not, okay? Actually, you know, actually really good options for force feedback. This, this is pretty good. This is a pretty good amount of options to adjust your force feedback. I lowered my friction all the way down, and that seemed to really bring the force feedback to life in this game. Um, you know, it's not great, but it, it's really not bad. I'll talk about that once I get into game. Uh, now, here's something I couldn't find for the life of me. I'm under the controls menu, and if you're used to G-Motor games, this is where you do your mapping, your force feedback, and your, uh, you know, like axis fucking linearity whatever the fuck sliders. For some reason, FOV in the cockpit is under controls. You go to extra, and here's your camera FOV. It's not mappable to any button, so I don't know why it's under controls, but that's where it is if you're looking for it, okay? Uh, so let's go back. Um, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, what can I say? There's a bunch of fucking options, all right? So with that down, we'll just go to, like, hot lap, and I'll show you some of the content in this game. All right. There's only one track in game. It's called D Park. I'm going to give you one guess, looking at this picture, as to what D Park is. Alright, you give up, it's Donington Park. Donington Park is the only track available in the, uh, in, in the demo. I'm not mad at that, I love Donington Park. Donington Park is one of my, you know, favorite, I, well, I don't say it's one of my favorite tracks, but I, I love, Donington Park is a good track to drive on, I like Donington Park a lot. The only issue I have is I have a strong suspicion that X Motor Racing did not develop this content. When I got on track and I raced on, on this track, uh, I really got the impression that this content was ripped straight from a Simmin game. All right, the textures, everything about it, you know, even the billboard banners, a lot of the logos that are used, I, I feel like this content was ripped right from a Simbin game. Maybe I'm making a false accusation i hope i am uh but it, but i don't think so i think i think this track was ripped right from a fucking simbin game okay kind of the same with the cars uh only donington park is available for tracks and the only cars available are the bmw m3 e92 dtm quote unquote which i i don't really know what the fuck that means this is definitely not a dtm car it's an m3 but it's it's not a dtm car um and I, I, call me crazy, I do not think that X Motor Racing can afford a BMW license. I, I don't think they can. Maybe they can. If they can, that's fucking awesome. Good for them. I, I don't think they're licensed. I don't think they own a BMW license to use this car in game. Um, also, sort of suspicious, once again, I'm speculating, but uh, along the same lines of me thinking this was ripped from a Simbin game, I... I I feel like maybe this model is ripped from a Simbin game. I know Simbin did the BMW M3 fucking challenge a couple years back. Actually, a lot of years back. And it, I don't know. You know, while I'm blaming them for shit, I feel like maybe they ripped this model from that game. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. All right? That's one car. There are two cars total available in game. The other car is the IMSA. IMSA. Um, being an American sports car racing fan, IMSA, 
oh, cool, it's going to be like an IMSA light. Or, I, I don't know, maybe a modern IMSA car. Maybe like a GT fucking car. Or maybe like a prototype car. I don't know what it is. Let's see what it is. IMSA, I like it. You know, IMSA's cool. Huge lag when you click on it. As you can see, my mouse isn't doing anything. Huge fucking lag. Uh, what's the IMSA car? Oh, it's some kind of European open-wheeler car. Okay, I don't know why the fuck it's called IMSA. Uh, definitely not a Formula One car. I, fucking maybe it is. I don't know. It doesn't look like a Formula One car. It looks very stubby, very short. It looks more like a Formula 3000 car or something like that to me. So, I don't know. Weird name, but this is the only other content in-game. Also, a little weird... This car is decked out in Audi TDI Power uh, livery. Uh, you know, I really doubt this game owns uh, an Audi license, and I don't think they're licensed to use this uh, livery in game. But, you know, whatever. I, I'm not really complaining about that. I'm just sort of pointing out that I think this game is doing a lot of fucking weird, shady shit. Um, with that said, we're going to pick the BMW M3. Huge lag once again. There we go, finally. Huge lag when you click uh, on certain things in the menu. A um, couple options for the track. I don't know what this means. Raceway, ring, I, I don't know what that is. And ring number five. I am assuming these have something to do with like different variants of the track, but it's not very clear as to what it is, so I'm just going to leave them at the fucking default. Um, yeah, that's the menu, that's the interface, that's the content. Let's, uh, let's go race and see uh, what happens here. Okay, interesting. Uh, I guess it's run... Um, I guess this game is running like two different engines, or graphic engines, or something like that, because when I clicked go uh, from the interface menu, my uh, video recording software stopped recording. Um, so I'm glad I caught that, otherwise I would have been doing some hot laps uh, for no reason here, and talking to myself. But uh, all I know is uh, I'm recording again, we're here at Donington Park, I'm sorry, D Park, um, in the BMW M3. Let's look around the cockpit. Not horrible. Um, I mean, I don't want to sound too much like a fucking negative Nelly. Uh, I mean, it's not horrible. What can I say? It's not It's not bad. The, the model doesn't look bad. It does not look current gen. This does, <laughs> looks nowhere near, um, you know, the levels of like an Assetto Corsa or P Cars or a race room racing experience model. Uh, it, it looks like a decent R Factor One mod, is what it looks like. Um, yeah, I don't know. It looks like a. Uh, it looks like an okay R Factor One mod. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Let's uh, let's do a couple laps here at, at D Park. Huge X Motor Racing billboard across the uh, front stretch here. But everything else, even you see like the orange billboards, and I'll try and point out some others that look very Simbin like. Another uh, X Motor Racing billboard. Like the old Foster's logos. I'm, I'm not paying attention to the track, I'm pitching to uh, billboard tiers. Or billboards here. Holy shit, I'm all over the place talking. Let's see what else. A lot of this looks like a fucking Simbin track to me. Alright, um. All that aside, oh, there's another one. The K and W uh, billboard. Simbin uses that in so many of their newer games. And I, I, for all I know, Donington Park may have K and W uh, billboards up, but that's so Simbin. I, like I feel like this is a Simbin track. Um. Anyway, with all that said, how does the car feel? How do the physics feel? Uh, surprisingly. Physics feel okay. Car feels all right. It, it doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel great. It doesn't feel bad. It feels like a pretty good mod for R Factor One. The Dunlop Bridge too. That texture. I swear to God, maybe I'm wrong, but that texture is ripped. Even this building here. I swear to God, those textures are ripped right out of GTR Two. Or maybe, um, I'm not quite as familiar with the Race 07 game and its expansions, but may maybe even that game. But those really look like Simbin textures. Uh, Alright, so anyway, physics in the car. It, it, they don't feel bad. They, they don't feel bad. I thought this game was going to feel like shit. 
I thought I was going to be all over the place. I thought I was going to fucking hate it. it. It doesn't feel that bad. It feels like a pretty decent... Holy <laughs> shit. It feels like a pretty decent last generation mod. Um, you know, for R Factor 1 or something like that. That's what it feels like. It's not horrible. I feel the bumps when I go over curbs. I can pretty much tell exactly what my car is doing for the most part. I'm trying to feel like I'm trying to get a little oversteer going here. Let's try and bang out a hot ish lap. Probably shouldn't have went in the fifth there. Very deep, very wide. I'm all over the place, I'm sorry. Alright, let's get it back together and let's try and bang out a decent lap so I can, uh, sort of tell you how it feels. Sounds aren't great. It sounds like the sound samples themselves are of decent quality, but, like, the mixing and blending, not really up to snuff with, uh, with newer sims. Brakes feel way overpowered in this car. They feel almost like open wheeler um, formula style brakes that really break on a dime. Over the hump. Uh, it feels good. I mean, the steering feels pretty good. It, it feels okay. I'm not going to lie. Definitely feeling the curves there. Holy shit, look at that helicopter. Look at that poor helicopter with its one little rotor blade just sort of hanging around there. How is that thing even still flying? Why did, oh, oh, you sad thing. You poor sad thing. Why did they even add that model into the fucking track? You know? I, I don't understand when game developers, racing game developers, decide to add flying things on their fucking tracks. I guess they think it adds to the immersion, but unless it looks perfect, it subtracts from the immersion. With a helicopter model that bad, with its little fucking Olympic rotor blades just flopping around, why did they even decide to add it? Alright. Back to the matter at hand here. The physics. They, once again, they feel okay. They're not bad. They're not nearly as bad as I thought they were going to be. They're definitely passable. All right, they're, they're not. They're they're just not bad. That's what I got. They're not bad, and that's pretty good because I thought they were gonna be fucking shit. But the sad thing is, um, the sad thing is, I feel like this sim could have possibly been something. I don't know. I mean, the physics aren't bad. It looks okay. It looks pretty fucking good. The interface is passable. I mean, it, it could have possibly been a fucking contender. Um, yeah, the impression I get, and this is purely speculation, but the impression I get is that some guy with an honest heart, you know, back in the mid-2000s, decided to develop a racing sim, and he fucked up somehow. Maybe he got in over his head financially. You know? Maybe it ruined him. I don't know. But the impression I get is that somebody with an honest heart developed this sim and then was forced to sell it to a group of fucking slime balls. That's the impression I get. And I think that the group of slime balls that bought this game are the ones who are aggressively spamming it and marketing it in, uh, you know, such a horrible manner, and really turning people off to the game. That's the impression I get. I feel like if this game came out in, like, 2007, 2008, at the level it's at now, and promised more development, it could have possibly went somewhere. But as of right now, 2015, this game is just not up to snuff. It's not. There's nothing this game offers you 
I, I honestly can't think of one thing that this game offers you that newer Sims don't. Um, and it's overpriced. It doesn't seem like any more development is, is going on with it. And on top of all of that, the marketing people for this game are fucking slime balls and are turning people off in droves with their aggressive, spammy, shitty, horrible marketing tactics. So, this game goes from a zero to deeply into the negatives if I were to do a great. Um, you know, I'd be happy goofing around in a zero fucking sim. You know, I fucking drive Grid Autosport every now and then. I drive fucking the first Grid every now and then. I like racing games. Whether or not the physics are good, whether or not they feel good, I like racing games. So, you know, this this game, at the level it's at now, I can easily see myself sinking some hours into. But not with the way um, it ended up, and not with the way the fucking marketing team is so aggressively marketing it. No way. That detracts so much from the game. So we're gonna go ahead and end, uh, end this after this lap and watch the replay. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, I feel like maybe I'm even giving this game too much credit. Uh, but I mean, the amount of... The amount of work that must have went into this game, if it's developed from the ground up, um, you know, is pretty extraordinary. I mean, it, this is a racing sim. It simulates racing. The physics feel accurate. So I feel like somebody put in a lot of time on this game. I just feel like that maybe different people own it now, and they don't know how to market a fucking game, and they're pissing everybody fucking off. Let, let's see if we can watch a fucking replay here or something. Start replay. Holy shit, big lag. Uh, what are we looking at? Front stretch. Okay. We're looking at the roof of the fucking car. Change camera. Bumper. What am I looking at? What is this? Rear bumper camera? There don't, there don't seem to be any names for the cameras. Okay. Not really a great view. The, the paint doesn't look very good. Like, the lighting engine, there's bloom involved, there's HDR involved, but look at how fucking overexposed it is right here. I, I feel like they took an old graphics engine that was developed in the fucking mid-2000s and in the past couple years slapped on, like literally slapped on some modern features. Like they got some code, they hired some coder out of high school who is used to working in fucking DirectX and shit like that. And we're like, hey, we got this game, we want Bloom in it. And he's like, oh, okay, a couple, you know, pay me fucking $3,000 and I'll put Bloom in your game. And he just dumped it in, and that's fucking it. Because it's sort of all over the place. In Cockpit, I don't see any Bloom. But here, it's overexposed like a motherfucker. Um, it, it just seems like a lot of these features... It seems like an older graphics engine with a lot of newer, trendy features just sort of slapped on haphazardly. That, that's the impression I get. Uh, so, yeah, this view sucks, and like I said, the textures in the game really suck. The materials suck. The lighting can be decent at times, but the, the materials suck. Uh, okay, mirrored view. Okay, here's a pretty decent view, um, <laughs> into the cockpit, where you can really see how poorly modeled the driver is. Very low poly. poly. Uh, this is a this is a pretty good view of the uh, right door panel. You know, if that's what you wanted to see in a replay, then uh, then this view would, would do you pretty well. It's a really good view of the uh, right door panel. I don't even know what the fuck just happened. Uh, here's that same view of the left door panel. Okay, now here's a now this is the kind of view I was looking for. Uh, this looks like basically my worst nightmare. Um, th this is a pretty good, this is a pretty good view if you were like tripping on acid, perhaps. Um, good view, we're gonna go to some others though. Okay, here, I'm gonna guess this is the mirror image of that nightmarish, hellish view. Uh, not bad. Uh, I will say that the cameras on this track probably need a little bit of work. Um, I, I don't really even know what I'm looking at anymore. Another camera view. Uh, here we go. Okay, we're back in the cockpit. 
Um, here's a really good view of the rear um, bumper and, and the rear license plate. Um, this isn't my preferred method of watching races, but uh, you know, it's good for a break. If you're sick of watching, you know, people passing each other and people making progress in a race, sometimes it's good to just watch the uh, license plate of a car. So this is, this is a pretty good camera. Uh, here's another one from the front, looking at the grill. You can also see again how low poly and shitty that fucking driver model looks. Uh, what the fuck am I looking at? These camera views are horrible. Okay, finally, a rear view. Another rear view. These are some of the worst camera angles I've seen in a racing game. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna guess this is like a static camera view, seeing as how the camera hasn't changed yet. All right, here's a pretty good one. Um, unfortunately, you can't see the car or the track, so you know I don't really. This is like one of those like uh, you know artsy camera views. It's a very avant-garde camera view for watching a race um, you know it looks good but I, I can't really see watching a full race in this view oh there we go look at that we're back on track this must be like some set from some static distance from the car so what is happening holy shit we're in the netherworld we're in the fucking 12th dimension this is a, this is a good camera view we're gonna have to remember that one we'll come back to that one here we go. Let's see. All right. Finally. Changing. So here's a pretty good trackside camera view. I'll let you guys look at that poor helicopter again. I'll let you guys look at it for a minute or two. Come to your own conclusions. I think the game looks okay. It doesn't look bad. You know, I've seen worse. I've seen better. I think this is all ripped content from fucking Simbin. Um... But the lighting engine is passable. You know, it's better than last gen Sims. Not nearly as good as uh, you know, newer gen Sims, but you know, whatever. It's okay. I don't hate it. Yeah. There we go. The materials do look weird on the car. They, they look... The track looks okay. Um, the, the car looks very artificial. And I think it's because of the materials. The materials don't look right uh, on that car. Yeah, that's what I got. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this here. We'll hop back out to the main menu. Just for, look, uh, look at that poor guy. Oh, I'm, I'm not even changing the camera views. It's doing that on its own. There, which is kind of weird. Yeah. All right. I've given you long enough. We're out of here. Um, I have a feeling the video is going to stop. It probably is going to stop because I think it cuts out of here and goes to like another rendering engine. Um, so the video is probably going to stop here. All I know is that's what I got. X Motor fucking racing, guys. It, it's objectively it is not horrible. It it also objectively is not good. It's about the definition of middle of the road as far as racing sims goes. There's no content to speak of. Um, it seems like the content is ripped from other developers. The content that is in the game. Uh, the physics are passable. They're not nearly as bad as I thought they were going to be. The graphics are not nearly as bad as I thought they were going to be. The interface is okay. Um, I just I don't see any reason to play this sim over even last-gen sims. You know, R-Factor 1 uh, may have had some rough spots, but it has so much content available for it now. It's been polished to a near sheen um, through its many years of development. I, I don't see any reason at all to try this game or to play this game over any of the other current offerings. And like I said before, you add on top of that the shitty, slimy, scummy 
spammy marketing tactics that the company has been using over the past year or two. And uh, it, it goes from not worth a buy to worth staying the fuck away from. Um, so my recommendation to you is just forget about it. Don't even try it. You know, if you do want to try it, download the demo. Don't buy it. Don't spend 35 fucking dollars on this game. There's nothing there. There's nothing there that other Sims don't do much better. There, there just isn't. So I tried to be as fair as I could. Um, that's really all I have to say about X-Moto Racing. Just, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next video.